How is everyone doing tonight? I, I was going to start off with a rant, but I mean, I won't start off with a rant this week. I'm going to start off with uh, a discussion because, look, once upon a time, I uh, learned not, they said never discuss religion or politics at parties. And I learned that the hard way over a long period of time. My life has been something of a full circle in that I'm now right back to where I was when I was about 20, where I learned these lessons. Don't discuss politics or religion at parties because in as much as I thought when I was a kid, you can have these discussions. We're adults. We are, you know, we are fully vaccinated is the actual term in French, you know, fully vaccinated adults. We can have discussions about sensitive topics. It never ended that way. Uh, it never ended well, I should say. And I remember once when I was studying philosophy, I was at a house party and I thought we could have a discussion about Shmushmorshin with the, you know, I'm such an idiot. I mean, I thought I could have this discussion and I could have it with a group of, of, of women. Um, needless to say, it ended in tears. I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't feel good about anything that happened. That It wasn't like a, nobody called each other names. It was just a discussion. And it ended up that, you know, the women had had their personal experiences, which effectively precluded any form of discussion, least of which or not the least of which is any discussion with someone who's not a woman. Uh, and I learned a lesson. That was really the last time I ever tried to discuss politics or religion at parties. Is there a donation feature like Rumble Rants on Locals? Yes, there is. There's tips, coins. I don't exactly know how it works. I just know that you can tip with coins. You like pre-purchase them. And I don't think there's any cut for Locals. There has to be some cut, but I'm not exactly sure how much. So by the way, before I even continue with this discussion, Standard intro, Rumble Rants, um, sorry, Super Chats, thank you very much for the support. I genuinely appreciate it. YouTube takes 30% of all Super Chats, and if that's going to miff you that you don't want to support YouTube, we are simultaneously live streaming on Rumble. Rumble has a Super Chat function called Rumble Rants. Rumble takes 20%, so better for the, to support a company that supports free speech, uh, better for the creator. If you are going to be miffed, if I do not bring up your super chat like such, do not give the super chat. I don't like people feeling rooked, chilled, grifted, rift, whatever it is. Um, so if you're going to be upset, if I don't bring it up, do not give it. I don't like people feeling bad. I don't like people feeling used. I don't like people feeling bad. And that's going to bring us back to my intro. Uh, Lon Baker, fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Very nice avatar. Welcome to the club, sir. Or I, I presume based on your avatar, but. Dr. John Campbell just covered a paper that showed that, mm -hmm. can't read the rest of that, which brings us into part two of the disclaimer. No legal advice, no medical advice, no election undermining fortification, yada, yada, yada advice. Um, and that's going to bring us back into, I don't, I never like making people feel bad. Oh, hold on one second. I'm going to bring this up. V, I fear that Robert is catastrophically wrong about Russia, Ukraine in a way that will blow back on both of you. I beg you, please at least watch Jordan Peterson's interview with Frederick Kragen. Uh, if you don't hear me on this, fine. At least I, I listened. I listened to Frederick Craig. Uh, is Frederick Kagan the one who referred to Putin as a as a thug, as a low grade uh, KGB, uh, not uh, informant, but but uh, KGB agent? I listened to that. He said, "I mean, I am not defending Putin, and there's no but to that." The caveat is that all politicians are fundamentally corrupt uh, and basically most of them are evil, but to varying degrees. So when you have the corrupt, unethical, two times ethic violating, pathological liar, divisive tyrant who sicks the police on his own Canadian citizens, telling me that someone else is Satan incarnate, uh, I may believe what I believe regardless, but when you have one liar saying that another politician is another corrupt liar, at some point you have to uh, you have to ask some questions uh, as to what's going on. The second thing is trying to understand the conflict is not the same thing as trying to apologize or be an apologist for any of the players. This is getting back to the you know not like making people feel bad. I never discuss a uh, shmush motion. I just don't do it anymore. I don't do it because. It comes down to a question of belief at the end of the day. You're not going to change someone's belief. We can play out the arguments back and forth. I could have the argument with myself. 
why it has to be allowed, why it can't be allowed, why there have to be limits on it. And regardless of which nuanced position you take, you're going to piss somebody off. The other discussion that I, I just don't get into because I have seen where it goes each and every time is the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. I know what I believe in that conflict. I know where I attribute on a balance of, of the scales where I attribute more blame to less blame. Do I think that the Israeli government is perfect? Far from it. Do I think they're partially responsible for what's going on there? Yes. Do I believe that they've committed atrocities over the last 50 years? Yes. Do I believe that the Palestinian Authority is responsible? Yes. Do I believe that innocent Palestinians and innocent Israelis are caught in the crossfires of two fundamentally corrupt governments? One may be more corrupt than the other, and I believe it is, but they're both corrupt to varying degrees, both contributing to exacerbating a problem. Yes. Try to take that nuanced position, and if you don't condemn Israel as being an apartheid state, you're a Zionist apologist, shill, whatever. Uh, if you if you dare to criticize the Palestinian Authority for perhaps dispensing of uh, funds on things that are not value-added to building a society, then you're called uh, another name. So, And regardless of what position you take on one extreme or the other or anywhere in between, you're going to piss somebody off. I know the arguments. I can play the arguments out in my head every single time, any day of the week. It just doesn't go anywhere. I did not appreciate that the Russia-Ukraine conflict, and I'm calling it a conflict, uh, regardless of whether or not I do believe that Putin is the aggressor at this stage of the conflict, I did not appreciate that the Russia-Ukraine conflict effectively is abiding by the same dynamics as the Palestinian-Israeli conflict in people's passions, in people's ability to have discussions about it, in people's willingness to hear the other side and to appreciate that it is more complex than Palestinians, you know, engage in terror and don't deserve any form of, of, of statehood, or Israel is an apartheid state and does not deserve to exist. I, 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 I didn't appreciate that the Russia-Ukraine conflict um, operates by a similar degree of passion uh, and complexity as to the origins and complexity as to the current state. I, I now appreciate that. I was not looking in this, in this exploration to be right. I was just looking to get it right. I just wanted to understand the origins of the conflict, to understand the nuance, because I still think there is nuance to this. Uh, Putin could very well be the most diabolical, maniacal dictator of all time. I mean, we know what he does to uh, political opponents. We know what he does, and he jails people you know, indefinitely for, uh, I would say, non-crimes. Yeah, I, I know Putin does that. I know Putin is is just as dictatorial, if not worse, than a great many other politicians. In that framework, do I think Zelensky is a uh, totally innocent, wet behind the ears, babe in the woods? Do I, do I think Justin Trudeau, who's telling me to hate Putin, is a trustworthy source himself? We're dealing with varying degrees of corruption, but corruption that exists at all at levels of government, within all governments. I did not expect, I did not understand that the, the, the nature of this conflict is very much analogous to the essence or the uh, zeitgeist of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. And in even just trying to understand it without saying Zelensky good, Putin, Schmittler, uh, if you don't say that, then, you are, then you've are then you misunderstood. You don't understand anything. You're being an apologist. I, I understand both sides to the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, and they have both done bad things. I have my underlying personal belief, which I believe is more justified or at the very least historically justified. I now think I understand the nuance of the Russia-Ukrainian conflict, but we're going to get into it regardless. And above and beyond the passions of the individuals who are caught there. I mean, it's a funny thing. Like, I, I, I had family that came from the Ukraine. I had family that also came from Russia. My grandmother's side left Russia in 1896 during the pogroms. My f grandfather's side left Ukraine. I think it was Poland at the time, became Ukraine. Austria, I forget exactly where it changed hands, but it changed hands multiple times. But I don't have the personal connection, the current personal connection to either side of that dispute where I am invested to that point like people who have family living in the West Bank or who have family living in Jerusalem, who go into bomb shelters every time there's a conflict. I don't have that emotional uh, passion attachment to this, to this dispute. And for those who do, other people, you know, from a 30,000 foot overview, trying to analyze it, trying to understand it, uh, 
unless you take the black and white one side or the other, you're an apologist for the one side or the other. So let's see here. My master's thesis was about deontological and utilitarianism. Was it something along the lines of behaving ontologically brings about the best income outcome for the most people? That is exactly what my thesis was called deontological consequentialism, which there is nothing worth maximizing on this earth except for the uh, objective good. So there's no such thing as good line. There's no such thing as good, you know, consequentialism. Kill one kid so that you save 10 others. Well, no, you're, you're not maximizing the good in the world by committing an evil act. And that was the essence of the thesis. I have to see how I actually wasted 40 pages describing that. But um, deontological consequentialism was the title. I'm going pu to publish that on Locals. I don't give very much exclusive stuff to the supporters on Locals. I'll give it to the supporters, and then we'll make it public for everybody. When you give, expect nothing in return, then no love is lost. Well, first of all, I love your dog, and it's a dog and a frog. No, no, no. That's a dog and a lizard. <laughs> Sorry. So that's it. I mean, look, we're going to talk about the Ukraine tonight. And I, and I hate the fact that unless you take a hard position one way or the other, you're a pro-Putin bot or you're a pro-Ukraine bot. I mean, it's like, and, and the bots are out in full force on both sides. And the propaganda is out in full force on both sides. And the double reverse super negative propaganda, which is fake propaganda to make anyone who retweets it look stupid, is out full force on both sides. For your rants, instead of starting with the famous, you know what really grinds my gears, you should say, you know what really grows my fro screenshot. And by the way, the fro is a little lame tonight because I I put some new hair product, which is an, actually a very old hair product, in my hair. And uh, I put too much of it in. Uh, I missed something. Matt B., who says, you are right about all conflicts are complicated and can be very brutal. But Russia has done this before. If you want to know how the modern Russian army fights and how brutal they are, look up the first and second Chechen war and the I have no doubt about that. But what 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 army has not fought brutally? The French in the and the Algerian in the Algerian war? The, the Canadian government fought dirty. Everybody fights dirty when you have war is hell. And atrocities are committed during war on both I mean I say on both sides. They are and the atrocities are committed on the side that might be in the moral right, and they're nonetheless committed. Like I, I, I know everybody feels about World War II, but to say that the Amer to say that the Allied forces did not commit atrocities in the context of World War II, I mean, that would be very convenient, but grossly oversimplified as well. Let me see if I can bring up that super chat. So, uh, the, uh, by the way, in the Chechens, I, I won't get into the Kagan interview was worthless. He said a lot while offering no proof. He related. To Victoria Newland, look her up. Kagan pushed the Western narrative. It, it, look, it, it, it explained a bit of the history. And do I have any doubt that Vladimir Putin and Russia are looking to regain their superpower on the global scale? I have no doubt they are. Uh, now, people looking for great power are going to do very, you know, sometimes very terrible things. But do I have any doubt of the narrative that Putin wants to reestablish Russia as a world superpower? No doubt. Do I have any doubt that NATO and the West wants to prevent that from happening at all costs? They don't want to share the power? No doubt. Uh, okay, let me see here. I want to get... Uh, okay, I see this. Oh, I, I'm, losing, I'm, losing, I'm losing in the chat. I can't do it. Barnes is there in the background. This is nothing like Palestine. The Duran has been consistently wrong about this war. I would stop taking what they say as gospel. John Andrews, I take nothing at gospel. I listen to the Duran and I don't take that anymore for gospel than I take Wikipedia for gospel. People have their respective knowledge. They have their respective life experiences and you've got to digest all of that information and then come to your own truth at the end of the day. Not your own truth as in that's my truth and this is what I choose to believe. Your best assessment, history is written by the victors. Everybody has their bias. So long as they don't say things which are overtly false that discredits them as sources, they are entitled to their interpretation of events. And it's going to be up to me to decide whether or not I find their interpretation to be convincing or not, or historically justified or not. You are right about all conflicts are complicated and can be very brutal. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Got it. And then there was one more right here. Black Rock Beacon. 
Frederick Kagan's brother is Robert Kagan and Victoria Newland's brother-in-law. He has an interest in not criticizing U.S. NATO policy in regards to Ukraine and Russia. He and family were involved in creating and implementing these policies. Cheers. Okay, people. Well, with that said, I've been going for a long time. Sorry, Robert. I'm going to bring you in right after this. 